Hola, soy Diego Justosi, el entrenador del Pozo de Murcia de Fútbol Sala de España. Es el ex entrenador de la selección argentina de futsal campeona del mundo. Los invito a todos a ver el programa Extra Time TV. Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Extra Time TV. This is Andres Soklalem once again joining us on our virtual set because it's virtual. It's Otto Off, uh, the assistant coach of uh, the US men's futsal team. How are you today, Otto? I'm doing excellent. Uh, great to see you again tonight and uh, look forward to speaking with you about the games today. Yes, yes. So once again, you know, I really thank you for taking time out of your busy uh, schedule because, you know, you're in there as well. So thank you for that. It's my pleasure. This is a, a journey for me that's a, a pleasure to be part of again, and uh, and I look forward to speaking with you. Right, right. So you know, uh, you know, like many other viewers who are looking at the show, you know, um, I'm known as a football guy, but futsal is an amazing. I won't say emerging. It's been around a while, but it's quite an exciting sport that's very different from football. And it's great to have you here, really explaining the little uh, details and analyzing the games with us. So, folks. Uh, Trinidad Tobago uh, played their final game in the uh, the qualifiers, and it was an amazing game with some amazing goals. And it was end to end action. And I'll be honest, I really thought at times we were really going to win this one. Uh, Guatemala is one of the strongest teams in this competition, and Trinidad Tobago gave them a pretty good scare. And unfortunately, the game ended up four three in the end. Uh, they nicked a fourth goal close to the end. Uh, Otto, tell me, what do you think? Uh, what were your initial thoughts on this game? Well, as we spoke last night, you know, th for for Trinidad and Tobago to to qualify, they had to come out and they had to win by at least three goals, I think. Mm -hmm. And so they had to come out and and be aggressive. They couldn't lay back and wait for you know wait for something to happen. They had to force the issue. And they did just that. And the pressure that the TNT players put on Guatemala was amazing. Uh, I sat here with our coaching staff watching the game, the speed, the strength, the persistence that they played with. And then when they got the ball, they attacked. I mean, it, it was like you turned up the, the volume on the, on the speed dial, you know, because they, they just were relentless the entire game. And uh, it was, if it was any other situation where the groups were different, I think they would have gone through and given any team in the quarterfinal round a very hard time. Yeah, you know, uh, I have to admit, I'm seeing progression, you know, Trinidad Tobago. I've been following the, the, the training from all the way back in Trinidad. Um, there, there were a lot of limitations, you know, for the team, you know, with the COVID-19 pandemic. And there's a lots of issues going on in Trinidad Tobago football. Uh, but, you know, Coach uh, Connie did a pretty good job. You know, they played Costa Rica, which is, I would say, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, you know, one of the strongest teams in the region. Um, you know, obviously that's debatable. And then, you know, they played uh, the Dominican Republic and this game here. And I'm seeing the progression. And yes, of course, it was not a perfect game. There were things that, you know, obviously that could be fixed. But I saw a lot of positives. I mean, uh, the individual brilliance of some of the players, uh, some of the goals, the mentality of the team. I mean, a lot of teams that have just rolled over, just knowing, oh, you know, we have to score four goals. This is the best team. And probably would not have given their all. And, uh, you know, I spoke to Connie at the end in the uh, post-match conference. And he said, those guys, you know, put their lives on the pitch. And, uh, you know, before, you know, I break down a bit more of the tactics and the other things, you know, that that is one of the things I noticed, uh, that the team is seem, seems to be growing from strength to strength. And I think in time, hopefully, uh, the powers that we give uh, Connie the time he needs to really uh, see this project through because I think the foundations are being laid and it looks very promising. So let's talk about the goals. Uh, there was a goal where uh, Che Benny, um, I can't remember them all right now, but I can't forget this goal. Uh, you know, we regained possession, Trinan Tobago, pretty much in front of our own goal and he basically lobbed the keeper. Uh, from his side of the field, which was an amazing goal combined with a couple other goals and individual performances. Uh, I know you mentioned in the last video and you just mentioned, you know, the individual skills of the players. But, uh, you know, from that goal, what do you think about that particular goal? You know, that as a goalkeeper, that's one of, that's like a nightmare for you, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> you see the ball, you know where it's heading. You're not sure exactly. You don't have time to look back and see where you are. 
and you're backing up, backing up and hoping that it just drops over the crossbar instead of into the goal. Um, as I mentioned to you earlier, I was, um, we were down at our team meeting and, and dinner. And so when we came up, I actually just saw the replay um, and I didn't see the kick, but you could tell that it came from quite a distance away on the trajectory. It was heading in and dropped over the goalkeeper's head. So to start off the game with a goal like that, uh, the player who made the kick had the wherewithal to not only see it, to take that kick, but then to put it on frame. Amazing way to start and had to energize the team for sure. Yep. And you know, uh, with all things considered, with the game ending up uh, at, at 4-3, you know, this is a very strong team, um, oh. you know, Guatemala. And, you know, they could have easily, Trinantibio could have easily drawn and even won this game. Um, you know, so what, you know, we spoke about this at the beginning, but uh, in terms of uh, the progression and this particular game, um, how far off do you think Trinidad Tobago is from being a very competitive team, you know, the next time around? You know, if the, the thing with futsal is it, it's a very, um, I don't want to say technical, of course it's technical, but it's uh, the precision that is needed and the timing that is needed between the players to actually make the futsal movements and patterns, um, you know, make them work and to execute them against the defense. It takes time. And it's not just time, it's time together. Familiarity with your, you know, eye contact and movement where you where you start to read your players. And um, unless you have that, I don't think you can um, you can ever really compete with the top level teams be just because just uh, as the game goes on, they'll wear you down. They'll wear you down and 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 eventually come out on top. But what Trinidad and Tobago has is the, the athleticism and the speed and the individual skills that, I mean, for them to be able to do what they did with, with uh, Guatemala today. And, and as we spoke last night, if they would have gotten a goal early, it would have been a completely different game against the Dominican. Um, so they have the raw materials. It's just the investment of time and you can't do it in a couple of weeks. What Connie did with them to inspire them to play like they did for him um, and for and for that red and black flag um, is amazing. And they didn't give up the entire match all the way to the end, even though they knew that they weren't going to go through. Um, they were playing for for their flag. They were playing for him and they were playing for themselves. And I'm so proud of him that he was able to get that out of them. And they should be very proud of themselves. And when they watch those games again, they're going to see opportunities that they like really good opportunities that they missed that, you know, looking back could have absolutely made the difference and they could be going on. Yep. You know, and speaking about opportunities, because we, you know, we want to analyze, you know, the good with the bad, you know, we're also learning with our audience. Um, one of the things it's a, it's a team with a lot of former uh, football players or soccer, depending on who you ask. Um, so, you know, their adaptation to the game was uh, in such a short period of time. There was obviously unexpected learning curve. You know, there were a couple of issues with the, uh, well, you know, the kick-ins or the throw-ins because, you know, football, obviously there's throw-ins, futsal is different, put the ball on yep. the floor and things like that, you know. So we saw little issues like that. And also, um, you know, it's a game that requires a lot of movement. Uh, obviously, it's a very fast-paced game. Um, so in terms of uh, while Trinidad scored a lot of goals tonight and created a lot of, a lot of opportunities, uh, what do you think about them uh, defensively in terms of uh, what they have to work on? One word comes comes to mind, and that's tenacious. I mean, mm -hmm. as we watched, they would get beaten, they would get broken down by the by the system of play, by the rotations out of the back by the Guatemalans, and it, it looked like you paused it and then moved them. Everything stayed still, and then you moved the defense back. They were so quick that they caught up, and they, and they would they, they were smart. They they stuck their foot in and took the ball. Not only took it, actually won it and counterattacked. Which, which was the opportunities that they, their best opportunities came on those counterattacks um, when they actually had lost the ball or gotten beaten and then they, they worked so hard to get back, stole the ball and countered. Um, their defense was tenacious um, up and down the field and the goalkeeper played. There were some saves that that goalkeeper, I think he's a young keeper and an outdoor keeper as well, but he just played very, very well today. So, um, you know, kudos to all of them. They, they put in a great effort. Yep. And, uh, you know, I was actually chatting with a friend who's a former Scottish keeper. Uh, he's, he's often on the show at times, uh, you know, he, we were talking, he's a goalkeeper. 
So, you know, I was asking him, you know, what are your thoughts on certain things? And one of uh, the concerns that I have is when analyzing these games, sometimes it's analyzed from an emotional perspective in Toronto and Tobago and in sports in general, um, where, you know, I'm going back to the progression of what he's done in a short period of time. I mean, he has been interrupted by a world pandemic and things like that. However, the errors, if you want to call him that, um, you know, were, you know, obviously they were there to see in terms of uh, things that are, are fixable. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, there was certain positional things that obviously you get with a team that is learning to transition from football, the traditional game to futsal. However, it must be said, as you rightfully said, I saw many of the games I attended a couple of the sessions with them and I saw the progression. I, I'm going to use progression a lot. This is probably about the fifth time. I'm going to put a word count for how many times I use progression, but I love that word because to me, that is key when you're assessing a coach and when he's doing things because a lot of people expect coaches to make changes overnight and you rightfully said you need time this doesn't happen in a couple of weeks you need familiarity you need time and i think you know some people when they do their initial analysis of the games within our country would be like okay it's a loss but they're not seeing the progression so it's very good to hear from someone like yourself who's working with you know the u.s men's team as well to to see the positives as well because sometimes it's it's uh, you know, very difficult to get past the emotions and really analyze and say, okay, we have a foundation and we can move forward. So, you know, with that being said, uh, you know, the next, you know, he's, he's going to have a significant amount of time to prepare. Um, how far off, and I, I kind of asked you this already, but how far off do you think they are from being where they need to be? Well, where they need to be is, it, it all depends, I guess, on where you want to be, right? Where you yeah. want to end up. And, and if where you want to end up is is passing through to the next round, they're they're almost there. But if where you are in futsal is to lay the foundation and then build on that until you can work up. If you see Guatemala play, they play the 4-0 system, which is bringing everybody back in rotations that include all the mm -hmm. all of the players. Only the Dominican and Guatemala play that system. They're the only two in 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 all of the CONCACAF. Um, it's something that takes a lot of time. It's a lot of coordination. And if if you make a mistake in this, you're exposed, and and the other team counters. And then against the team, against the team like Trinidad, you give up those counters, and and it's going to be trouble. So, um, if Connie's around there and he's able to work with it, those kids that when when I was there with him during that Olympic run. Um, we went, even though we were coaching the girls, Connie wanted to try to make sure he introduced futsal into the school. So we went to four of the, I believe they're all like Catholic boys schools. And at lunchtime each day, um, we did what he called king of the court. And so the boys were out there. They only had the hour, hour and a half that we, and he threw four against four couple of goals. We popped up and they played two minute games, or if you scored, you won and the other team was off mm -hmm. and the talent level of the players that were there playing in bare feet, playing in no shirts, playing on the concrete was just outrageous. You don't see it in the United States like you saw it in Trinidad. And that's how countries of four to 7 million, you know, people can compete with a 330 million person country like the United States, because the passion in the neighborhoods and in the schools is there. And um, if, if he gets to start with, you know, with kids that are, 15 to, to 18 years old and, and have a four years before the next cycle um, can teach them some of the fundamentals. Who knows what they could do because the athleticism is there, the passion is there, the soccer culture is there. And now if those kids can watch these games and see how close that this team was and how much fun it was, um, how much excitement was there back and forth and um, it's contagious. And, and I think that there's all the, all the parts are there. You just need to put them together. And uh, it's not like you can just throw somebody in there and, and make it happen. Right. It has to be some consistency. And we spoke earlier. I can't say enough about my friend, Connie Constant, Right. But uh, we spoke earlier about how, how he has an uncanny knack of bringing people together um, through respect, through passion and love for the game, and then just his worldliness. Um, he knows how to treat people and, and try to draw the best out of them. If a guy like him is around for a couple of years that can build a program and, and educate some younger people to, to take over for him when he's done, there's a great future for the program in Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, yes. I, I, I totally agree because I've seen the progression. I've seen him work with the girls. 
and the guys. And, you know, it's important to have these conversations with people like yourself so people can understand, you know, the time frame where he's working with and, you know, get that information out there so people could not just understand what he's doing, but, you know, understand a game of futsal. It's not like, oh, you just put a couple guys in there and, you know, you know, play. Because I, I had to explain to a couple of people as well, you know, they, 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 they kind of simplify or trivialize the transition from football. Like you just put a couple football guys in there and it works. And a simple reason, a reason I'm going to build on is like, for example, if you had to interpret the formation that Connie used, uh, what formation would you say they used in this particular game? Wow. It, it, they, they played in kind of a one, two, one with somebody high pressuring the ball, mm-hmm. but that's because they kept one, one player back primarily. Mm-hmm. The four, but when they when when Guatemala attacked with four, they didn't wait for them, right? And mm-hmm. so when Guatemala beat them, their game became a, a hustle back and win the ball defense, and then turn a right away a right around and and counterattack. They were able to do that because of their their speed. So they turned kind of their weakness, which is getting broken down and, and getting beat into their strength by utilizing their asset of, of speed and, and again, tenaciousness. I tell you one thing that I think, look, as any person in any profession, um, if you stop learning, you, you kind of go stagnant and become irrelevant. And, and I think Connie learned, as, as, as I learned as well from our experience with the girls down in Trinidad, um, one of the things that I, I, I remember specifically talking to him about, you know, throwing a bunch of stuff at the wall and see what sticks in the amount of time that we had with them. I think that was maybe a little overwhelming, especially with the maturity of, of the girls and the age of the girls trying to learn everything about futsal in a couple of weeks. I think he really learned and chose the players with, again, their speed and their strength, their, their shooting ability and the goalkeeper. He made a great selection to give that chance, that team the best chance. And, um, and they didn't get real complicated. You know, they really played to their strengths. Um, there was a couple of free kicks that they played smart behind the wall, behind the line Mm -hmm. of Guatemala that went flying right through their their defense and right past the back post in, in a deflection or a touch um, could have changed the game there as well. So um, it was a well-played game and, and there's only so much you can do in, in a short amount of time as a coach. And I think he got a lot, if not the most out of those players. Yep. You know, and you know, just, just to end things off because I know uh, you know, the U S have been doing pretty well, uh, you know, so congratulations. You guys are on the verge of, uh, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but securing qualification, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes, we were very fortunate. All three of our games were uh, extremely tight and a bunch of different things that we had to overcome to win those matches and tie the first one. But uh, but things have gone our way thus far, so we're very fortunate. Excellent. So what we'll do is we'll definitely speak about you because, I mean, we we had you speaking about Trinidad Tobago, but we'll definitely chat about the U.S. team uh, when time permits, I guess, because I know you're a busy <laughs> guy. But, um, you know, just to end things off, you know, even though Trinidad Tobago did not qualify, folks, uh, we gave a really good uh, account of ourselves with considering, you know, the short period of time uh, Trinidad Tobago uh, was given to prepare. And, you know, to be honest, and I think Coach uh, Otto agrees with me as well, it could have easily uh, could have been a win for us tonight. So while it was not obviously it's never going to be a perfect game, I think it was above the expectations of a lot of people. And, you know, with a little luck, and the ball bouncing the right way a couple of times, maybe putting a couple balls in the net, it could have easily been a win. And I think that's very encouraging. So uh, for all you guys and gals out there who you know look at the XTV and are giving your comments, you know, take a look at that game and listen to what coach has to say because he knows what he's talking about. So once again, Otto, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. It's after midnight in Toronto Tobago. I don't know what time it is over there, but you know, we really appreciate you taking time out to analyze and explain the game you know, to us. It's been my pleasure. Again, uh, you guys were in the toughest group, I think, uh, with those two top teams in there. We have to face one, if not both of them, if we want to go on. So um, we learned a lot from watching your games. I thank you for having me on. And congratulations once again to the, the players from Trinidad and Tobago and Coach Connie. All right, Otto. So once again, folks, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment in the comment section below. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and on Facebook. Feel free to give us your comments, suggestions, and thoughts. We love them all. And, you know, we'll definitely have a couple more chats with Coach Otto and many others as well. So 
Thank you very much. And everybody have a great evening and keep watching. Have a good night. Thanks, Andre. Boom. That was great. Just to remind everyone, for more episodes with Shaka Hislop, be sure to head over to our YouTube channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more updates, interviews, and content.